This is KTVO's Good Morning Heartland. And welcome back. It is 626 and there's been a lot of flu talk this year. The CDC is telling us that we are in the middle of one of the worst flu seasons ever. Now we're hearing about a norovirus a stomach flu outbreak as well. And Dr. Justin Puckett from Complete Family Medicine is here this morning to break it down for us. How are you doing? Good. Good morning. Good morning. So please tell us what is the difference between the two? Well, uh, you know, the, the, we both here regionally, we call both of these the flu, and so mm -hmm. it gets really confu confusing. And so the, the, the typical flu mm -hmm. is a respiratory flu. So it's, a, it's the influenza virus that affects our lungs, our okay. upper respiratory, um, uh, and really shouldn't have any nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, that sort of stuff. Whereas the stomach flu can be caused by viruses, bacteria, mm -hmm. um, even some irritants that we might eat can cause gastroenteritis or the stomach flu. Um, and that, that, that use, that's a totally different separate uh, uh, disease process. Okay, and does the flu shot uh, help you um, protect yourself from the stomach flu? Yeah, another good question. The flu shot is just strictly influenza. Okay. So it's only protecting and affecting um, the respiratory flu, not the stomach flu. And so I know we hear a lot about people who say, I got my flu shot and I got the flu. And my first question in the office is, well, what did you have? And 90% mm -hmm. of the time it's, well, I had a little bit of diarrhea, I got nauseous. And really those, e even if you had normal reactions to the flu shot, uh, that's just a good example of coincidence. Okay. And you, you just touched base on some of the symptoms. What are some of the common symptoms for uh, the stomach flu? Well, some of the common symptoms of the stomach flu, like we said, is uh, uh, fever, mm -hmm. uh, nausea, and sometimes the nausea gets so strong that you'll have vomiting. Uh, mild to moderate diarrhea can be another symptom. Uh, a lot of times, uh, patients will complain of cramping, um, even just real abdominal pain and even some bloating, and might also, uh, if that nausea and vomiting gets away uh, and you can't keep anything down, then dehydration and, and even subsequent electrolyte abnormalities can occur. Okay, and then we also have some more of the worrisome uh, symptoms. Yeah, you should really seek medical care uh, if you notice any blood um, in your vomit or stool. If, you, if you're throwing up and you have a little bit of blood, that's kind of normal, but if there's a lot of blood, then you, then you need to seek uh, care. Also, if your stool is uh, really abnormal in that it's pasty or that it's uh, uh, really oily, that can be another thing to seek care for. If your vomiting or diarrhea just won't stop, uh, then you need to seek care because, again, you'll get dehydrated. Or if your fever gets really high, if your, if your abdominal pain is so uncontrolled. Um, and then, again, if, if you have any signs or symptoms of severe dehydration, especially if you're not urinating well, then those are all, all signs that you should seek care. All right. And what, 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 what can be done to prevent, you know, the stomach flu? Um, it goes back to just any good viral disease of mm -hmm. lots of hand washing, mm -hmm. um, staying away from other people when you're sick. This is spread primarily from the stool. Okay. So um, a lot of times uh, we really encourage whenever, if, if somebody's sick to be using bleach, be using a little bit of bleach in, when you wash your dishes. Even if you've got kiddos that are having diarrhea um, and even if you're not using cloth diapers, but we know that that stuff gets everywhere. Right. And so putting a little bit of bleach in with those soiled clothes and okay. the washing machine are all good ways to control to help control this. Okay, and we also have some pictures of um, the norovirus. So go ahead and explain what all the hype is about. Yeah, the, the norovirus is um, a, a typical virus that causes mm -hmm. gastroenteritis or the stomach flu. Um, we see it every year, but I think part of the hype here is every three or four years there's a new subtype identified, and this year it's the. 2B um, Sydney. It was first found in Sydney, Australia. And so our bodies haven't seen this cousin of the norovirus. Mm -hmm. And so many of us remember the norovirus. It used to be called the Norwalk virus. Um, and it was responsible for causing the outbreaks of the, uh, of, of the stomach flu on the cruise ships back in the early right. 2000s. And so really, it, it's, a, it's a new bug floating around, but it's just causing the same sort of symptoms. It's not a super bug. It's okay. nothing to get, the last three or four years, we saw the 2B or New Orleans was right. the primary causing agent. But this one has just, with all the world travel, kind of mutated in Sydney. They found it there and it's brought here. And now we're seeing widespread gastroenteritis in the U.S. We've certainly, in our urgent care center, uh, been doing a fair amount of IV fluids and, and treating people conservatively. There's, there's not a whole lot. You don't want to stop the diarrhea. You want to you, you want to let that bug get out of you, right. uh, but, but boy, it can really make people sick. 
Okay, well, thank you for that. We'll post all the information on our website on heartlandconnection.com as well as your information. And before we had to break, um, this weekend, you actually got presented with a new title. Oh, yeah. Thank so you. can you, can you kind of let our viewers know what that is? Yeah, this, uh, uh, on Saturday night, uh -huh. I was installed as the president of the Missouri Society of the American College of Osteopathic Family Physicians. So um, I'm going to be doing some traveling, representing all the osteopathic physician, family physicians in Missouri. Well, uh, congratulations. Thank you. You're very welcome, and we'll be right back.